Hi YouTube. I just want to make a little video here today on our solar system on our Coachman Clipper. Uh, this is a, a 30, 32 foot uh, to the tongue Coachman Clipper 2021. I had the idea to put uh, some solar on it. We have uh, four 100 watt Renogy solar panels, um, three 100 amp hour AGM batteries, we have a 3000 watt Renogy inverter and we have a EP Ever MPPT uh, 30 amp charge controller. We'll get up here and take a look at the panels on the roof. Um, this is not going to be an installation video. However, I am going to give a sh couple short clips uh, on the transfer switch. I know they can scare some people, confuse some people, but I just want to show how easy it is uh, to do it So to start I just did uh, my service cable for shore power uh, going in to this Receptacle with a 10 wire extension cord going into my inverter um, So down the road I may put some kind of uh, Generator switch over using this outlet, but we're gonna do it right and uh, install the automatic transfer switch. This was just temporary. So here's a shot at our four panels, 400 watts. Um, the roof is a little dirty for me being up here. And excuse the excuse the wind. The wind's very windy today. Um, what I did is I uh, used one of the solar junction boxes over there, the waterproof. Uh, I did lap sealing around the screws. I put the lap sealing down first. I'm going to try to put some pictures on here of how I did it uh, in this video too. And then I put little plastic anchors down in. I drilled and put anchors in with a Gorilla Glue epoxy so they won't pull out. So I'm not going to have to worry about these panels coming up down the road. I didn't trust the screws and then the work of finding the studs. Uh, without a stud finder, I just I thought it'd be a lot easier that way. So I gorilla glued the anchors into uh, the plywood, and then I screwed to them. I put lap sealant underneath the brackets, and then on the outside and on the screws. So no, it's not the prettiest job over here, but it's good enough for me. Um, there's the MT50 charge controller. Um, and there's my Renogy inverter uh, switch for 120 volt. And there's my ban uh, uh, battery monitor on a 100 amp shunt. Um, as you can see, my batteries are pretty much topped off. I'm bringing in 81.6 volts. Um, I have no load or anything on it right now. And basically what I did was I ran those wires down through. Here's my compartment. Uh, for all the solar, I got three, I think they're Wise, Wise 100 amp hour AGM batteries, about 60 pounds a piece. There's the 3000 watt Renogy inverter. Not the cleanest wiring job, but it's good enough for me. Everything's secured. These battery boxes are screwed down to the floor. Um, I was going to put the tops on them, but I'm not really worried about it. I just put the electrical tape over all the terminals. That way we don't have to worry about dropping anything and shorting out. So basically right now I have the wire coming out of the uh, inverter going to that receptacle you saw outside. Um, we're going to now take this under the camper to the transfer automatic transfer switch. Um, so, yep, I got... Uh, that going on there. Um, I got a 10 amp fuse up on the roof. Um, right here, I got a 30 amp feeding uh, the charge controller um, and a 300 amp uh, circuit breaker. These are all circuit breakers, not fuses. I stand corrected. Um, on the 3000 watt inverter. I know I probably won't even draw that much and it also works well for switching when you want to work on stuff you can pop these breakers and use them as a switch so right here is kind of where i just i brought the wires up 
um, to my controllers here. Just ran them down. So there's my son. Say hi. So at first I was going to come down the wall with the panels on the roof and then pop uh, these corner beads off. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more I said, eh, because th this is all pine. You know campers, they're not built the best. And to pop that apart, I'd probably split the, the pine and the wood. So I decided not to. So what I did is, uh, that's why I had them oriented the way I did up on the roof. I, I uh, some of the lap sealant did come through, but everything sealed up really well. I went over top probably with it. So my two, um, my two legs coming down um, from the roof, come all the way down and then they go under. I ran them under and then they pop up to the charge controller. Again, I have a, a 10 amp fuse up on the roof. And then I also have the 30 amp circuit breaker uh, to the charge controller. I was gonna hook them up in parallel. <coughs> in parallel excuse me at first but uh i decided to go the serious route so now we're going to hop over to the installation of the automatic transfer switch and try to get a couple clips uh so people can make sense of it it's really easy so anybody like discouraged by it and said you know the you know, or just don't feel comfortable with the, insta uh, the installation of the transfer switch hopefully this helps uh somebody out that's looking to do it it's pretty nice you plug in the shore power it'll automatically click over to that. Uh, the shore power uh, side is kind of like the main. So if it sees that on the circuitry, it'll just automatically go to that. And then if you lose shore power, um, it'll switch over to your power inverter or off your solar automatically, which is nice. So like I have that receptacle out there, I wouldn't have to worry about getting out, open that side door and plugging up. So here I have the go power transfer switch right here. The TS30 is the 30 amp model. Um, some of the older units didn't have these quick connects, which is fairly nice. Uh, you got your ground bar over here and your circuit tree or circuit board up here. And kind of the smarts to the switch over on everything. So make sure that you have um, that all uh, the right side up on your schematic just to make sure you have it wired properly because. I looked at this um, the last time and I think I almost installed it backwards on my old camper. So that's one thing you wanna look at. And if you look close to the diagram here, this is this is your relay circuitry, just so you know. So, you know, if you were looking at it that way, um, you would want it to be that way with this at the bottom. Just a quick little, and then your, of course your ground lug over here. So that would be on the left bottom side, like it is here. So I did remove uh, the hot side from my 30 amp breaker, and then the neutral, and then the ground right there. And this is shore power in, and which has these little tabs you gotta you gotta pop in, and then it'll pop right out of there. So there's your shore power. And basically, I'm going to feed that wire into a hole into there where this, where this circuit goes and into there. And I'm going to mount the transfer switch here and um, kind of like use it as a junction and feed back into the panel. So knock on wood, I got that out as I showed you before. And I fed it through the existing hole for that circuit that goes uh, through here. And it pops right through here, and I have uh, a good bit of wire here. So knock on wood, that, you know, this is going very smooth so far. So we're going to get our box set in here. And uh, not saying that all your camper setups are going to be this way. Maybe if you have a Cushman, it, it'll be similar. Um, but it should still help uh, anybody out. So I took that set up there with a little paddle bit and I popped right down through here. Um, what's nice about having that extra long bit and if you have one of the standard, I don't know, six, six or so inch bit, um, you have that insulation down there. Um, you, you can still use a smaller bit, drill through and maybe poke like a piece of wire down through the insulation. That way when you crawl up under the camper, um, 
they're going to find the hole a lot faster. But with the extra long bit, and I have like the 12-inch bit or so back there, maybe in a 14, uh, you can pop down through and then puncture through your insulation. And as you can see, I can see daylight down there. So I'm going to run my tin wire uh, up through here to feed into the uh, transfer switch here. And that wire is going to be fed from the 3,000 3, watt Renogy power inverter. Okay, so basically we got the transfer switch kind of positioned how I want. Um, keep in mind, all this transfer switch is doing is your, your shore power going in and then you're going to have a shore power or you're going to have a power refed to the panel. And then you're gonna have your generator and or inverter, and that's it, three wires. So basically you're taking your shore power out of the panel, going into the junction, a transfer switch, and you're gonna have another wire refeeding the panel that uh, will switch over automatically. And then you're gonna feed in on your alternate power source generator or inverter. So there will be three wires essentially. Okay, we have everything wired up here. I do have to push that back into that connector as I set the uh, transfer switch in place just because of the length of the wire. But everything is connected. As you see here, uh, the power cord, um, which is your power, uh, your shore power. I don't know why they didn't put that, but you know, power cord. So um, mark that as your shore power coming in from your plug outside your camper, which is that one there. Okay, that one I gotta, sorry the focus, I gotta push back into the connector once I set the box in place, which goes to the bottom two leads, your hot neutral on the bottom, the very lowest ones. And remember your circuitry is right here, so that's how you can tell top from bottom. Okay, so then your generator hot is the next leads up from those which is that hot wire there, and this is my generator slash inverter hot, or the next two leads. And then the top two leads, on the very top, from the circuit board, is to your panel. So which is this wire here, it's kind of a mess, but those two leads, your hot and neutral, are feeding back into the panel on the switch here. Now all we have to do is feed this back into our main panel of the camper and hook up to our 30 amp breaker and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we have everything installed. I put the uh, power feed into the camper panel and we are going to power everything up and give it a shot and hope for the best. Double check your wiring always. Do not tighten these connectors too tight. Obviously, this is a mobile trailer, uh, RV, travel trailer, wherever you want to call it. Um, I know I, I do electrical. Um, don't ever tighten those because you can smash wires and have bad things happen. Snug them down, make them tight. Don't ever tighten those, especially with the stranded here. So we're going to light things up here. Hope for the best. Okay, uh, you can hear the cooling fan. Um, I had the inverter on. I'm actually on shore power now. Uh, the relay's been kicking on and off. I'm running tests here. Um, so basically it automatically will look for whatever one I think comes on first from my testing. Um, I could be wrong on that. But anyhow, it's working. Um, if, I, if I flip over to solar, uh, you'll hear it switch. Uh, in the relay or in the switching in there and then it'll switch over to the solar So everything seems to be working fine. So it's time to button everything back up All right, you two so I'm got this extra clip in here um, As you can see here, we've added the fourth battery which puts us up to 400 amp hours um, I, I went ahead uh, I will say for these wise batteries they ship really fast. Uh, Amazon, I did get the last one on eBay. Um, <laughs> every time I've, I've got uh, batteries from this company, 
um, the ship really fast. Uh, there's a lot of good reviews. So I've uh, put the three batteries on, only under uh, a load a few times. So I know you want to match them good. And, and, and once you throw your battery bank on, you want to have the batteries uh, there. You don't want to add as you start pulling loads to brand new batteries. So shouldn't really hurt anything there. Um, so now we're, like I said, I've turned the light on here. And now uh, we're up to 200 amp, uh, 200 amp hours and usual, usable battery power. So it's about all I wanted. I'm going to upgrade to a lithium iron phosphate probably sometime down the road. Uh, but these are going to do the trick for now. Um, this probably, this puts us, uh, the drop down to 50% to monitor and on our uh, battery monitor will put us down to 2400 watt hours, which is about what I'm looking for to get through a few cloudy days, uh, some weekend trips, etc. So, uh, well, that's going to conclude the video. Uh, I just wanted to add that I did put the fourth battery in here. Again, I know the wiring is not um, all that great, but it, it, it does the job for me. I'm not, it's not a showcase. Uh, it, it works. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for uh, an update of using this um, out camping. So I wanted to throw this into this video. Um, I could have made a second one, I know, but um, we went all through the night uh, running uh, the battery uh, bank here. And um, I came here early in the morning, uh, ran some coffee, uh, was running the heat. And we only used, uh, as you see there, is, is 954 watt hours. Um, so right now, um, this, is a, this is a separate system under the bed here. Uh, uh, it's not tied in with the coach battery up front. I wanted to isolate that. I want to upgrade that battery too. That's, that's a whole other subject. The ones they put in, they aren't the greatest. Uh, it tends to uh, die out rather quickly. Um, so like for instance i was running the heat and um i was running off the 12 volt off that and had the converter power down to save on power and obviously you're a little paranoid at first and and try to uh you know withhold on consumption but i will say that uh for uh testing these batteries for a few times um, I would definitely make it through a few cloudy days. Like I said, I was burning a pot of coffee this morning. Um, this MPPT charger is only rated for 150 volts, but even with the four panels, I'm still at 73 volts and I got almost a uh, peak sun right here. I know it will get up to 84, so about another hour, I think I'll be up at around 84 volts. Um, so right now I'm only drawing 114 watts and we're bringing in 228 uh 228 watts right now of energy uh to make up so that's pretty good um i'm pretty impressed with all this uh, and uh i just wanted to add that i am uh putting up a five uh a fifth panel at 500 watts so i have a a, a fifth energy on the way and that's going to max out our system now, no, you'll say that's too much for a 30 amp charge controller you have down there. Well, I know this. Um, how they're laid flat on the uh, up on the roof. Um, I don't think that I'll even be bringing in that full 390 watts this controller is rated for. Um, so I think I'll be good. Uh, so even on cloudy days, it's going to help make up. Uh, however, I am looking to purchase the 40 amp charge controller. And uh, my dad is doing a uh, workshop, uh, wood shop, a uh, little solar setup. So I plan on probably selling him my 30 amp and my AGM batteries because we are going to be upgrading to some lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries after I, I get those and put them together. But uh, thanks for watching and I will put up a follow up video of probably uh, using this uh, camping and uh, doing some doing some further tests on on the draw of these batteries here, so that and if anybody's interested in in these uh, these wise, I think they're wise. I think it's like W E I Z 
uh, uh, they've been great so far. So if anybody's interested in them, I think they're like 170 bucks on Amazon. I'll try to post some links here. But everybody, thanks for watching. And I will have some more uh, YouTube videos coming up for sure on solar. Uh, I, I, I find this very cool. Uh, it's a very cool thing to do. I'm, 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 and like me, I'm a hobbyist. I get into everything. But yeah, I will definitely be posting some more videos. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.